Okay, hello. Welcome to the long-awaited any percent no main money storage tutorial. It's been requested for quite a while. I've just been very lazy. Figured it was finally time to make it. Um, so I'm gonna do this pretty in depth so it hopefully can help new runners as well as uh, people who want to learn the more advanced tricks alike. Which means it might be kind of long, but hopefully you can deal with that. <laughs> um, the other thing is, this is going to assume you know how to do the basic glitches, like out of bounds and float. Um, it'll cover how to do some more complicated ones, like load warps, because they're more specific to the certain situation you're in. But for like the very basic glitches, I'm going to assume you know how to do them. If you don't, uh, ask in the speedrunning discord, people will be happy to help. Or there's really old guides on speedrun.com that the root is super outdated on them, but they would still teach you the glitches properly, so you could use those if you want. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Create a save file, obviously. Unlike NMG, there's no shade skips in any percent no main menu storage, so you can do Steel Soul if you want, but it like there's no difference. You're not going to save time by doing one or the other, You're just going to have a different HUD. Uh, and the first thing you want to do is just as soon as you've skipped past all the cutscenes, just start mashing quick map. And then once it opens, stop mashing so you don't accidentally close it. And then you do want to close it when you're about to hit the ground so that you cancel the hard fall and start moving immediately. Um, you'll just kind of get a feel for the timing of that. It's not too precise. The other thing is I actually didn't do it there. But as you walk past these crawlids, it doesn't matter for um, NMG really. But you kind of want to pogo them as you go past them for uh, this category. Just so you have the soul for later. I'll heal myself from running into that crawlid. But yeah, just like as you... I mean, they're on weird cycles now. But as you go past them, pogo. And uh, you shouldn't hit that ceiling if you're on a real cycle. It's just because I kind of uh, slowed myself down there. So you won't lose time to pogoing it. You'll have the soul. And you're just going to want that seal soul for healing later. Assuming you do the optimal strats. Um, and this section is the same, you want to pogo this fly. I'm just going to kill it so I can stand here for a second. You wouldn't normally do that. But the one thing to note is that as soon as you aggro this fly, you're going to be super sliding off of it once you reach the top of King's Pass. So as soon as you've aggroed this fly, it actually doesn't matter how fast you go. Your movement should be focused around making this fly get to the top as fast as possible. It doesn't matter if you make it to the top of King's Pass if you're going to have to wait 10 seconds for the fly to show up. So make sure your movement is focused on making sure that fly doesn't bump into stuff as it tries to go towards you, not focused on necessarily you doing the optimal movement. Um, so get past it. And then once you're on this lip, up slash it just to make it go a bit faster. You can pogo the crawl it as you go past, and then super slide. And so the reason you would pogo the crawl it is because if you miss that super slide, which is easy to do, it's a frame perfect trick, you can have a backup on the crawlid, which isn't going to work now because the gap is already there, but I can still show how it would work, which is just do a jump and then a super slide immediately after. I missed, but same inputs as a super slide except add a jump right before, and that'll just, it'll super slide you and you'll make it over this lip and you'll land somewhere around here and you'll just slide across this like normal. If you miss both of those, uh, you can try to come down here for the the other fly that wouldn't normally be dead. But um, honestly, at that point, if you're not going to reset, then just just don't do a super slide. Just go down the bottom path. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is that sometimes as you go past here, just because of RNG, this, uh, this falling spike here, sometimes it'll kill the Venge fly. If that happens... My recommendation is just do this anyway and try to get the slide off the crawlid. It's like very marginally slower than the Venge fly, but by like 0.1 or something. So I, I would still try, you know, it's a, in my opinion, it's kind of a waste of an attempt to reset just because the Venge fly died. And also if you're just starting, don't reset the super slides. They don't matter that much. This one saves like 12 seconds, which sounds like a fair amount, but you're gonna have bigger things to worry about if you're just starting out. So yeah, if you don't get a super slide, take this bottom route. 
Uh, it, as you notice there, this is 1028. It's a bit laggy, especially when uh, that this spike here, uh, this falling spike hits these spikes down here, it'll clink and that'll like give you a big freeze frame. So be prepared to deal with that. I'm not used to it because I don't usually take this route because I reset for super slides. But um, it won't be too hard to adjust to it. Just be ready for it to be there and know it's going to happen. Anyway, once you're through that, whether you super slid or not, just come over the door, uh, break it. And then... Oh, actually, one other thing I do want to mention is if you if you have super slid here, don't back out of the menu with B. Because if you back out of the pause menu with... or Well, not with B. Uh, with whatever... I don't know how it works on keyboard to be honest with you. Don't back out of the menu with whatever button heals <laughs> um, with your focus button. Which, because some people want to do that with menus um, because B backs out, but it's also the focus button. If you back out, you're going to stop moving for a little bit while the game tries to make you focus, and you don't want that. So back out of it just by um, pressing the A button on continue or pressing whatever on continue if you have different bindings. Um... And then, yeah, that should give you control immediately instead of having to wait for the tiny little focus animation it tries to do. Um, and then, as you break this door, you're just going to want to mash quick map after it's done breaking. And you're going to mash it until it opens and closes, and that'll just give you control in, or in Dirt Mouth a bit earlier than you would normally have it. Just like that. And jump off here. Cancel the hard fall of inventory. And then Dirt Mouth's going to be normal. Um, I use this lamp post in the background as a visual cue for when to start jumping. Because in Dirt Mouth, there's this trigger on the ground here. This box right here that I'm walking in and out of. In and, out of. and as long as you're in that, you're going to be walking slower. So you want to spend as much time in Dirt Mouth in the air as possible. And so I use that lamp as a cue for when that when this hitbox is about to start. Um, other than that, though, Dirt Mouth, there's nothing special here. You just got to jump through. And then once you've reached the other side, uh, I use this little kind of seam uh, between the two like stair tiles as my cue for when to do a full hop into the well. Um, saves like a tiny, tiny fraction of time, but it's there. If you want to like, you, you should try to pre-jump around corners. It'll give you a bit more falling speed as you get off the ledge instead of just walking off and having to start your falling speed from zero. So I just use this little seam in the tiles as the visual cue for where to full jump. Once you fall down here, open quick map during the transition so that you can cancel the hard fall. And then go left. And you're gonna like, wanna get transition storage here and pre-jump into this gap here. Fall down, cancel your hard fall and drop down into here. Um, you can get hit by Gruz on the way down, obviously, if you get bad RNG. That's, um, kind of out of your hands, unfortunately. What is in your hands is if you do this, um, as fast as possible, is this tick tick will be, like, about here when you reach this point. So just be careful not to be totally pressed up against the left side of the hole here, because if you are, you'll hit this tick tick. Um... And that's going to lose time as well as health, and health is kind of important. Um, if you take two damage on this fall, and you want to do optimal strats, you're going to have to heal, because you're going to need to take three damage later, and if you take two hits here, uh, you'll need to um, heal or else you'll die when you take that three damage. If you're not going to do the optimal strats, don't need to worry about it as much. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it for this room. Just drop and cancel the hardfall. You want to jump into this load. Um, so what you're going to do here is out of bounds and go to the right. I missed it. You won't because you're better than me. But you're going to out of bounds, land on top of here, and then walk over here. There's a little ledge here right before the load zone. If you can, you want to try and avoid that. You do want to hit the load zone though. So you're going to hit the load zone and load towards mound and then wait for it to automatically push you back and then out of bounds again and fall down and just hold left until you hit that load zone down there. 
the reason you take that detour into mound is, as you can see, it despawns Cornifer. Um, and what that does is open up a Zelda's shop, which you'll need later. And taking this out-of-bounds path and taking that detour towards mound um, is a bit faster than talking to Cornifer, which would have the same effect. So you just want to go out-of-bounds around here, try to avoid that little ledge if you can, not get stuck on it. And then out of bounds again and hold left until you get that. And then again, you're actually gonna chain like a ton of out of bounds in a row here. When you hit this load zone, wanna out of bounds. And there's a ledge here again. So you can kind of avoid that by what I do is I just, as I out, out of bounds, um, I hold left. So then I'll be like out here somewhere when the room loads in. And then. As soon as the room loads in, I start holding right again, and then that generally lets me avoid that little lip and not get stuck on it. And then one last out of bounds. Again, there's a little lip you can avoid. Um, so I did what I do there. And you'll just kind of get a feel for how that works, but I kind of go out and then in and then out and in again to avoid that little tiny lip there. Um... And of course, you can just, like, you can land on all of these if you want. If you want to, like, if you're not too concerned about the minimal time loss you'll get from hitting that. But, um, it is nice to kind of practice. It feels really smooth if you make it through all these out of bounds without missing any of them and without getting stuck in anything. It feels really nice. So, the last thing in this little sequence is that you're gonna end the out of bounds by loading into this room. And you can just load in and walk back. Um, but because you're just instantly entering that room and then leaving it again, the faster way is to quick map right as the room loads, and then you'll just immediately already be inside the load zone as soon as it's active again, and that saves, like, 0.2 seconds um, to do that. It's called just called a fast turnaround if you quick map. The only danger with it is that if you do it at the wrong time, like that, if you're a bit too early, you can fall out of bounds. So, it's up to you whether you want to risk falling out of bounds and kind of ruining your run for the 0.2 time save. It's not that risky once you get the hang of it, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, and in this room, I, ha I like to have transition storage, and I do a pre-jump from right about here. In the kind of... You can see a dark line that separates these two little, I don't know, pebbles. I don't know if they're mushrooms or pebbles. I guess they're pebble pebbles. Um, so I jump from, like, this line separating the two pebbles here, and that puts me in the load zone. And I do that with transition storage. I don't know if you actually get extra speed from it. I don't know if that falls long enough, but just in case it is, I do transition storage there to hop into this load zone. And then you're going to do yet another out of bounds and go to the right. And what you want to worry about for this one is making sure you don't hit the leg eater load zone. So you want to make sure you fall past the leg eater load zone, and then once you see that you're past it, you'll you'll be able to see like the room. So once you see that you've fallen past it, you can start holding left to to hug the wall, and then once you're convinced you're hugging the wall, you can inventory drop to drop faster the rest of the way into the load zone. That's kind of the uh, the babyest way to do it, and is a bit slow. Your other options are inventory drop like so, and then hold left until you hit the load zone, um, which is a bit scarier. I actually hit the wrong one there, but it, it's a bit scary because if you inventory drop too far, you can sometimes miss both load zones, and uh, that would be bad. And then the fastest strat, if you want to learn it, is after you out of bounds, you want to quickly open quick map again, which will get you transition storage. So out of bounds, open quick map. And now I have transition storage. I can also make inventory a bit easier to see through for you. So I have transition storage. And then fall off. And then hit the right load zone. Again, I hit the wrong one. I'm not used to doing this with the camera actually looking at me. I'm not sure what it looks like. But my visual cue for doing it if I'm like in an actual run is a little bit after the screen goes pure black because the camera won't be following you because you'll be dropping too fast a little bit after the screen goes pure black 
is um, is when I start holding left. So it looks something like this. Wait for pure black, there it is, and then hold left. And um, now you're in the right room. And that's the fastest way to do that at a bounce. Uh, again, you're going to want transition storage as you walk into this room for just a very minor time save. Going to walk through it normally, except at the end here, you want to pre-jump into this last little hole. Uh, I messed it up there, but if you do it right, you can make it down there without colliding with the right wall at all, which saves a little bit of time. And I don't think you can do that um, if you don't have transition storage. You can see I got stuck on the wall there a bit. It might still be possible. I don't know the visual cue for where you would try, but it's a lot tighter without, trans without transition storage. So I recommend having that just so you can get that little extra time save. Now you're gonna out of bounds. Go left. I messed it up, but um, you're gonna wanna make sure you avoid this acid because as you can see, the hitbox sticks out a bit. So you wanna make sure you're, you're a bit to the left of the level for at least the start part of the drop. Once you're past the acid, it's uh, all smooth from there, so you can just hug the wall and inventory drop or not if you're scared. Um, and similarly to the the first room, it is going to be fastest to do the out of bounds and then get transition storage immediately. It just makes you fall a tiny bit faster. But that one's like a bit scary. It's kind of easy to fall past the level if you don't know what you're doing, so... And it also saves very little time. In the first tall room, it saves a significant amount of time. In this one, much less so. Anyway, whichever way you choose to do that, you'll end up here. And now there's a load warp you can do, which saves about 7 seconds, but it costs 3 HP. Um, so it can be a bit scary, and also it can be a bit tricky to do. So you can decide whether you think that's worth it. You can heal back some of the HP, which is why I told you to get that soul and dirt mouth. You'll be able to heal twice, so you'll be able to effectively only lose one HP to doing the trick. But if you don't want to do it, the strat is just walk across this room. Nothing special at all. And then get here. Out of bounds. And the out of bounds on this level, everything's perfectly flat. flat. Um, there's nothing to bump on, there's no acid sticking out. So you can just immediately inventory drop or transition storage and just hold left and hug the wall the whole way down and you'll uh, be perfectly fine. And then you'll load into this room and you can either fast turn around or not, go back this way, and uh, this is where the load warp will put you. So you, you, you're, you're caught up to there. Um, but doing the load warp does save a significant amount of time just because walking across the room with cloth in it is pretty slow, it's a long room. So if you want to do the optimal strats here, you're going to do a load warp. So you're going to come back into this room and either inventory drop into that acid or just have transition storage from the load. And then after you uh, hit the acid, you're going to mash quick map so that it opens and closes and then you'll have control of the character. And then you wait until the screen fades in from darkness and basically immediately after it fades in, you're going to jump into this load that's right there. And your goal is to gain control while you're still inside the load zone. So you have, like, the width of this load zone is your window. If you gain control outside the load zone, you're gonna room dupe, which is bad. And if you uh, gain control before you hit the load zone, then um, you just, you won't get anything. You'll just go into the next room like normal. So you want to hit that load zone, gain control while you're still inside of it, and then you're just gonna hold right. And the rest of the trick will happen by itself if you just hold right. Um, and sometimes people have issues where like the rest of the trick doesn't happen. You want to be wary of the fact that sometimes the game drops your directional input mid-load. So if you're on analog, you can fix that just by like wiggling the analog stick. Because it, it counts each new angle as a new input. So it won't drop your input if you do that. And if you're on... Uh, d-pad or keyboard just like repress the direction button during the load just to make sure it doesn't drop your input but i can show you what the load warp looks like so inventory drop into the acid open close when the screen fades in you jump into the load zone and then hold right uh and then that'll put you down here um and so it takes a bit of practice to get the timing right but 
like I said, the rest of the trick happens automatically if you get the first part. And the last little thing you want to add on to the end of that is after this. Start holding left because you're going to be moving left in the next room and just open inventory. Um, and now you have, it's not transition storage, but it's functionally the same, which means that as you walk across this room, you can heal. And so you won't lose any time to healing and um, you'll get two of your health back. So that can be nice for Mantis Pogo. So then whether or not you did load warp, you will end up here. You're going to out of bounds as you enter this room, go to the left. Drop past the first load zone, and then hold right to hit the second one. Again, the same things as with other load zones apply. You can add in inventory drops there, or transition storage. A very minor time save on this one, and the transition storage is risky. What I do is I just, um, after the first load zone, hug an inventory drop. I don't do transition storage for this one. But it is technically, like, I think, a, less than a tenth of a second faster. So, if you want to do that do that. Um, now for this room, all there is to it basically is getting to the bottom as fast as possible. The fastest way is going to be with transition storage. So you're just going to get that and jump over this mushroom. Now, the mushroom can spawn on either side of this platform. Or he might spawn in the same place, but he can choose to walk in either direction. Um, either way he walks, you will be able to jump over him without losing time. You'll be able to just hold left and jump over him. But it can be kind of difficult if he's near this side while you, um, when you jump over him. So if you, if you can't quite get that down, you can just not have transition storage. And if you don't have transition storage, you're able to pogo, which makes it even easier to get over him. Which can be nice, because with transition storage, you can't use your nail. But... Jump over him, and then just drop, cancel your hardfall. And if you didn't get transition storage, um, you're just going to drop, press up against this, and inventory drop. And then comes Mantis Pogo, which is uh, kind of tricky, but it just takes some practice and you get the hang of it. Unfortunately, no main menu storage doesn't really have as good of a setup as NMG has. Just because you have less tools to work with, you don't have Ventral Spirit, you don't have Dash. So the RNG for the Mantises matters a little bit more. But you can learn a kind of general setup and then adapt to what they do, and it's usually pretty consistent. So I'll show you what I do, which is I get transition storage. I have transition storage here, I just fall down here as fast as possible, I press against this and hold left, and then around here I cancel the transition storage, because it's no longer going to matter. And then I just walk left, jump, jump, get over that guy however you can, and then pogo these guys. Um, I did have a weird setup there. Basically, more than anything, these guys' RNG actually doesn't matter too much. I'm just killing them so I can talk. But this guy's RNG does matter. He gave me like the kind of worst pattern there where he stands right near this exit so you have to pogo him to leave, which kind of messes up the setup. But in any case, the general rule is, for my setup at least, once you hit the lever, come over to this side. The mantises should be hanging out somewhere around this corner. So you walk over to this side and then they form somewhat of a staircase for you to just pogo up and get to the other side. Um, I know Pest had a different strategy than I did, and it, it, he said it was more consistent for him, but I don't honestly know how it worked, so I unfortunately can't show you that. It was a little bit slower, but he said it was more consistent, uh, so there is that to look into if you want to ask about that in the Discord or whatever. But I'll show you what mine looks like in an actual run through the room. That's gonna be bad, but, um, so, yeah. What happened there was one of the Mantis's attack, when he came back upwards after his attack, he bumped the other Mantis upwards, which kind of messes up the setup. That's kind of the, the worst thing they can do to you. If that happens, I go for a damage boost, 
which you can see I tried there. I go for a damage boost by like holding and pressing up against this wall and then try to get a damage boost when I'm like near the height of my jump, near the max height of my jump. And then after getting that damage boost, I try to pogo across. That's kind of my backup for if one of the mantises messes up the other one's path. It doesn't always work, but it's pretty consistent. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then you're in a better spot because you should just get like a pretty nice um, staircase type thing to pogo up like that. Uh, you can see I did add one extra little thing there, which is as I came out from under here, I uh, did a little mini hop. And that's just because if these mantises are both up in this corner, they won't attack you if you just walk at this height under them. So if you do a little mini hop, you can kind of bait both of them to attack at the same time. And if they both attack at the same time, it minimizes that one of them bumps the other one out of the way. So it can be a little nice to do that just to help the consistency a little bit. In any case, you get the Mantis Pogo, come up here, and you want to Interaction Storage Mantis Claw. And that just allows you to move during this part so you don't have to wait for all of this to happen. Um, and once you have that, basically immediately after, I waited because I wanted to be able to show you with a clean screen. Um, but the fastest way out of here is to wall jump on that side and then wall jump up this side. Um, you can also just wall jump off this side, but it's not really any easier and it's slower, so, you know, just do it this way. <laughs> um, and then the fastest way down this drop is unfortunately a bit RNG, because you'll have sometimes three mantises kind of clogging up this hallway. But if they're in nice spots, you want to get a wall cling off the top of here. Uh, you don't need to do the one at the bottom. But the wall cling off the top of here, I, which I apparently can't do, well, if you do that, you won't hard fall at the bottom. Just that little wall cling, like right at the very start, is enough to stop you from hard falling. Whereas if you walk off and you don't do that wall cling, you'll hard fall. So, um, yeah, the fastest way down is that. However, sometimes mantises are in the in the way, and they they generally like to really be here because you uh, you were in here, kind of leading them to the right side of this corridor. So generally, if they're in the way, you want to go left side. And you can do that either by walking off here, hitting the tip of that platform to stop the hard fall, or you can hit the tip of this platform. I missed it, but hit the very edge of that to stop the hard fall. Or you can wall cling there. Um, it's a bit slower, but you know. Basically, the main thing is as long as you don't hard fall at the bottom, you're pretty good. As long as you avoid the hard fall, you're pretty set. That's the biggest thing you want to make sure you, that does not happen. And also try to avoid getting hit by the mantises that will be clogging it up. And uh, one last little trick for this room is here. The, the normal way to do it, if you don't want to do a super slide, is you just come along here, wall jump up here, and uh, walk to the right. However, you can do a super slide off this mantis. And the way you're going to do that is wall jump off the edge of this thing to get up to the height of that mantis. You're going to pogo the mantis and then up slash it as you go past it to do two damage to it so it's ready for a super slide. And then you're going to, um, again, come along here and super slide off of it when it's about there. You can't, unfortunately, just super slide off it from here because you won't make it across this gap. So you have to wait for it to be like higher up and then jump and slide. I actually have never tried just doing a jump slide from here. That might be optimal. I've honestly never attempted it. I don't know if that gets you across the gap or what. So uh, I can try it now, I guess. But what this looks like if you do it all at once is this pogo up slash. Come along here. I'll try the jump slide. Yeah, I think... If you're standing on this edge, he's just, like, not going to come towards you much. It's probably still optimal to do it, but I'll do it the normal way. Just to show you what that looks like. Wait for him to be high enough, and then super slide. I missed the super slide, but that's what it should look like. And you'll make it across this gap. And then just make sure to cancel your super slide before you go out of bounds, because super slides deactivate load zones. I am curious if this super, super jump works, though. So I'm going to try this, like, one more time, and then I'll be fine with the tutorial. I'm just, I'm curious. Yeah, I think just generally he's not going to be in a good spot for it. 
Um, if he is, though, feel free to try it. I feel like it'd be faster if it if uh, he is in a good spot. Anyway, once you're here, out of bounds. And, um, I mean, I missed it. Again, you won't miss it because you're better than me. But I am going to miss it. Out of bounds. And you can just hold this wall. Uh, slide against this wall and then inventory drop. Or if you want to be slightly fancier, do the transition storage thing. Or you do the out of bounds. No, no you don't. Because I'm bad. <laughs> uh, but where you do this out of bounds. And then you get transition storage immediately. I missed it. Again. But you get the point. Um, and entering this room, you very much want to have transition storage. Because it does two things for you. It makes you fall faster, which is really nice. But especially is really nice is you do not slide with your claw if you have transition storage which like oh so you can hold against walls which is very convenient whereas not only you to hold against a wall you slide which is slow so you want to make sure you get transition storage entering this room and then you're just gonna pre-jump down the down the falls and when you get to this one when you're down here you want to start a heal as you walk off the edge. The heal's not going to complete, but you can see the animation started. And what that did is now I have focus storage instead of transition storage. And the difference is if I had transition storage and I walked into this and I picked it up, I would still be able to move around. Um, which is bad because if you actually do movement in the wrong way after trying to interact with this, you can lock yourself out of picking it up um, and you'd have to reload the room to try again. Whereas if you have focus storage, when I pick it up, you will see I can no longer move. So you just want to, like, start this little heal as you walk off this lip just to switch to focus storage. Um, and then as soon as you pick up the item, you're just going to uh, close this and quit. And you can quit immediately. You don't have to wait for any uh, anything to save or anything. You can just quit immediately. And, um, that's the it. <laughs> that's the it. But that's the end of, uh, Dash Master and, and Claw. So, that's gonna be the end of this video. Next video will cover Dash. And, uh, yeah. We'll see how that goes.